Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own audio frequency analyzer using the Arduino Uno and OLED display. And this project will be very simple, mainly due to the fact that I'm using a dedicated audio analyzer module from the F robot. And so what this analyzer does is it takes an audio signal. In my case, it's coming from this microphone, but I can also directly plug it into the audio source. And this chip analyzes the audio signal and spit out values for seven different frequencies. And you can see those frequencies on the bottom of the OLED display. So it's ranging from 63 Hz up to 16 kilohertz and you can see that as i talk those individual bars are changing the size and if i stop talking everything will go back to zero or very close to zero so enough talking let's get started and before we do so let me talk about the sponsor of today's video which is a pcba and not only you can get pcbs but also 3d printing cnc machining and other types of manufacturing and if you use the link down in the description you can get 10 pcbs for free only paying for shipping so thank you pcba and let's get back to our video I will split this project into multiple parts. So in the first part, I will connect the OLED to the Arduino Uno and draw something on the OLED display. And by something, I mean rectangles and labels because those will be needed later on. In the next part, I will connect the audio analyzer module and get the values for those seven frequencies. Finally, I will connect everything together to show the real data on the OLED display. Now the used display is the SSD 1306 128 by 64 pixel resolution in the i c version. And the great thing about this display is it is supported on the Wokfi website, which is a free online Arduino emulator running in the browser. So what I can do is open one of my older projects and use that as a starting point. And I will use this one, which is the OLED menu project. And the code might look complicated, but I will get rid of most of the stuff. The only thing that I really need is to make sure that I include the UHG2 library that will be used for drawing. Then I initialize our display, which is the SSD 1306 128x64 pixel resolution using the hardware i square c connection. In the setup function, I need to call the UHG2 begin function. And then inside the loop, I need to first clear the buffer, draw something. And in this case, I'm setting the font and drawing the string hello world. And finally, send the buffer to the display. I have buttons that I will not be using, so I can get rid of those by stopping the simulation and just simply deleting those. That will also delete the connecting wires and there's actually a different version of the display you know this one is the old version and i believe that the new one the only difference for the new one is that, that the new one has only four wires so i can click the plus button and type in 1306 and then drag the display over the canvas get rid of this one and connect this one so sda will go to sda which is pin number a4 scl will go to stl which is pin number a5 and then vcc will go to five volts and ground will go to ground and so now when i restart the simulation i should see the message hello world now, when I want to draw something on the OLED display, I usually start with a tool called PhotoP, which is the free online editing tool similar to Photoshop. You don't actually have to do that because, again, this is a very simple design. It only includes few labels and few rectangles. This time I've mainly used PhotoP to find out what might be the sizes and positions of those individual rectangles. And so, as you can see, if I click the distance checkbox, our rectangles are 10 pixels wide, and the distances between those are 9 pixels, except for the leftmost one and the rightmost one. In this case, the distance between the rectangle and the edge of the screen is only 2 pixels. As for the height, I want those rectangles to be maximum of 53 pixels tall. So let's draw some rectangles in our sketch. And if I open the UHG2 documentation, we will be using the drawbox function. And that one requires the X position, the Y position, the width and the height of the rectangle. So here is an example, which I'll copy into our sketch. And for now, I will comment out the drawing the string. Now I want to have seven different rectangles. So it might be a good idea to store the height of those rectangles in a new variable. And I will use the name audio bar height. Of course, I want to have seven of those. So I'll create an array with seven items. And since the height will never be bigger than 256, I can use a type of byte. For visualizing purposes, let's predefine those with some random values in the setup function. Let's create a simple for loop inside our main loop. So for integer i equals a zero, while the i is smaller than seven, we will increase the i by one. And for every i, we will draw a new box. So I'll paste this draw box function inside our loop. And let's talk about some parameters. The x will be two pixels on the left side, plus the item index times the spacing, which is of course 10, plus the space, which is nine, which is 19. So it's two plus i times 19. The y position will be based on the height, which is this audio bar height, but we want to draw it from the bottom to top. So I will say it's 53 minus the height. 
of the index i, the width is 10 pixels and the height is the audio bar height value, again index of i. Let's restart the simulation and see what we have. And it doesn't look quite right but that's my mistake because we are setting the value starting from the index 1, we should be starting on index 0 instead. So let me just change this to index 0 and restart the simulation. And that seems to fix it, so now we have 7 different rectangles. Before we animate those, let's draw those labels on the bottom of the screen. And we already know how to draw labels because we've done it for the hello world message, so I will uncomment those two lines, and instead of drawing a hello world message, I want to draw the individual frequencies. And if I open the documentation for the audio analyzer module, I can get those frequencies in here. So I'll just copy this one into our sketch, paste it in here, and maybe get rid of those individual commas. And the X position should be 0, and the Y position is calculated based on the baseline, which means the bottom of the text, so this should be 64 to be sitting on the bottom of the screen. And I believe that we can also remove hertz from those labels to make it slightly shorter. However, when I just start a simulation, it's still very long. We can barely see 5 labels, while we need to see 8 of those, so at this point it might be a good idea to look for a different font. So I will open the font list for the U8G2 library, and I want the list of the smallest fonts, and then I will scroll down for the 8 pixel height, and I'm looking for some font that is quite condensed, and I believe that down here there was a font which was called Nirho, Nirho, I don't know how to spell it, but this one seems to be quite condensed. And TF stands for full font, TR is a reduced font, and TN is just number. So I'll go with the middle one and copy this into our sketch and use the set font function to set a font to this font. And this looks almost perfect except for the fact that not all the labels are aligned with the corresponding bars. So instead of drawing everything as one string, I'll just split it into multiple ones and draw one label at a time and then tweak the position slightly. I could have probably calculated the size of the label and then center it based on the position of the bar, but this manual approach does the trick as well. So we have the individual bars and we have the individual labels. I want to draw one more graphical element and that will be the peak value, this small line drawn over every bar, that will visualize the maximum value reached in certain time. So when the bar grows bigger, the line will of course follow the bar, and when the bar is smaller, every frame the line will go one pixel down. And it will be hard to visualize those without the bars changing the size, so let's actually start with that. Let's set the sizes of those bars to some random values. So inside our loop, I will calculate a new random value, I will call this integer random value, and I already know that the value coming from the audio sensor is between 0 and 224, so I'll use the same range, so I'll call a random with the maximum value of 1024, and I will set the audio bar height to be this random value, however, the random value goes between 0 and 1024, our bar should go between 0 and 53, so I will use the map function to remap the value of random value which goes between 0 and 1024 to go between 0 and 53. And since this is a random value, it's jumping quite a lot, actually much more than I want to. And an easy way how to fix it is to change the value only slightly. I will calculate the difference between the new value and the old value, and then move towards the new value, but only slightly. So I will say that the audio bar height is the audio bar height plus the difference, so the new value minus the old value. And I want to divide it by some number, for example, divide it by 2, and see what will be the difference. And so now changing the size is not so crazy. If I want this to be even smoother, I can increase this divider, for example, to number 4, and I think I will keep it this way. Again, this is mainly for visualizing purposes. Let's work on those peaks, and for that it'll be nice to store the position of those peaks, and let's call those audio bar peaks. Also, we don't need this section in the code anymore, and we want to draw those peaks. And I will use the same code for drawing the bars with a few changes. So the X position will be the same, the Y position will be audio bar peaks, the width will be 10 pixels, same as the bar, but the height will only be 1 pixel. At this point, nothing is visible because those peaks are on the position 0, so we haven't set the position yet. Let's do this right now, and we will say that if the size of the peak is smaller than the position of the bar, so if the peak size, audio bar peak, is smaller than the audio bar height, in that case, we want to set the peak to be the size of the bar, so we'll say the peak equals the bar. In the other case, and that is if the peak is bigger than the bar, we can slowly move it downwards, which means that we will decrease it by 1, for example like this. And as expected, we can see those peaks following the bars, so the bars are pushing those peak values to the new maximal values, but when they are not pushing those, they are slowly moving down. And I think that at this point we have everything that we need for the graphical part of this project. Before we move to the audio analyzer, let's quickly test this on the real Arduino, so I'll copy the code and paste it into the Arduino IDE. If you haven't used the U8G2 library before, you need to go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, type in U8G2, press the Enter key, find the correct one, which is this one, U8G2, and click the Install button. After that, select the correct board, in my case that's the Arduino Uno, and hit the Upload button. The connection between the display and the Arduino Uno is the same as inside the Vokvist Sketch, so the ground goes to ground, the VCC goes to 5 volts, 
SCL, which is a serial clock, either goes to the dedicated SCL pin or it can go also to the pin A5. SDA, which is a serial data, either goes to the SDA pin or to the pin A4. And as I restart the Arduino by pressing the restart button, you can see that now we can see those individual bars being animated on the OLED display. And since it seems to be working nicely, it's time to move to the audio analyzer part. The module looks like this and it has quite a lot of connections, but thankfully you can see those connections inside the documentation. The left part goes to Arduino, the right part goes to the audio source. Unfortunately, they provided cables as female header pins, which makes it a little bit hard to connect to Arduino Uno, because Arduino Uno also have female pins. So instead of trying to use a different wires, I will use this shield which converts the female pins to male pins, and it also has a power and ground pin for every individual pin. Here is a screenshot from the documentation and I will try to connect it in the very same way. The free wire connector goes to analog A5 and if I connect it like this I will also connect the power and ground. R goes to pin 5 and S goes to pin 4. As for connecting the audio signal I will use this analog sound sensor also from the DF robot and connect it to the right side. And it doesn't quite matter if I connect it to the left channel or the right channel because the reported values are for the both channels at the same time. Again, using this provided free wire connector, I'm also connecting the power and ground at the same time. So with everything connected, let's jump back to the documentation. And looking at the sample code, it's obvious that we need to include some custom library, so I'll click this library and sample code, and download this library from GitHub, so clicking the download zip button. However, when I try to install this library using the sketch include library and zip library, I see an error saying that the library name cannot include spaces. What I ended up doing was creating a zip file with a simple name, only including the cpp and the h file from the github, and then it was working. So I will copy this sample code from the documentation into a new Arduino sketch and upload it to Arduino. And when I look at the code, it seems to be printing out those values using the serial port, so I will open the serial port clicking this button, and I can see a lot of strange characters. And that's because it should be matching the speed inside our sketch, which is 57600, so let's just change it, 57600, and now we see some numbers. And those are actually changing as I talk, but it might not be obvious because it's you know scrolling all the time. So what I can do instead is to close this dialog and click the same icon, but with the shift key pressed, and that will change it to serial plotter. So now instead of seeing those numbers, we can actually see those graphs. And you can also see that as I'm talking, those graphs are very big. But if I stop talking, everything should go back to zero or very close to zero. So it seems to be working just fine. We just need to merge this sketch together with our OLED sketch. However, if I look at the connection of the audio analyzer again, it looks like that we are using pin number A5. And we've already said that the pin A5 is also used for the I2C connection for the clock line. So just to stay on the safe side, let's use a different pin. Inside our sketch, in the initialization, the analog pin A5 is this pin, so let's just change it to pin A0 instead, reconnect the wires, upload it to Arduino, and verify that it still works. And that seems to be the case. I can still see the graphs changing as I talk, and of course not changing as I don't talk. Let's connect the OLED display to the shield, and there is actually a dedicated pins down here, so SDA, SCL, ground, and 5 volts. And again, you can see that the audio analyzer is now connected to the pin A0. And since we have everything connected, we can start merging those two sketches together. I will open those two sketches side by side, so the left one is the OLED display, the right one is the audio analyzer, and start copying pieces from the audio analyzer into the OLED sketch. So I need to include a library, that's for sure. I need to initialize the audio analyzer, paste it down here after initializing the OLED display, and I probably want to include this freak value array, so I'll paste it down here. I don't need to start the serial communication, but I need to initialize the audio module, so I'll just copy this line into the setup function, and then inside the loop I of course want to read the individual frequencies. So before everything, I want to read those frequencies, and then instead of assigning the random value, I will actually assign this value to the audio bar height. So I will say that the audio bar height equals the frequency value of the index i. Same as before, I want to remap this because it goes from 0 to 1024, and I want to remap it between 0 and 53. Actually, I see that in the original sketch, it was using the frequency value minus 100 while still being above 0, so maybe I will just use this instead of, you know, simply reading the value. So I will remap this value, so the frequency minus 100, staying above 0, to value between 0 and 53. And that's actually pretty much all that's needed, so I'll upload it to Arduino. And so same as in the beginning, as I told, those bars are moving. And that's pretty much it. If you have any comments or questions, please put those out in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.